Oh, hi, you sexy beasts. Hey, it's Kevin Goatee, Gutting the Sacred Cow. What's going on? Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Here we are, new week, new episode, and guess what? Today we've got James from the First Bat Podcast all the way from dreary old England, and he has chosen the Dark Knight Rises, not the second one. Good luck to any asshole who wants to try and take on Dark Knight. Any hoozy doozy, don't forget, still tickets are going fast, no bullshit. They're now halfway sold out, January 23rd. Clifton AMC in Clifton, New Jersey. Bill and Joanne from The Morning Show. You might have seen me on there recently. Yet again, talking about the live show where Bill and Joanne are coming on to do Karate Kid. Get your tickets now. Guttingthesacredcow.com has the link. Speaking of the website, every day we have new articles. Go up there, check them out. What the hell? Why not? Go run away from your your family during the holidays. Go read an article while they're trying to call you in to open a present that you're eventually going to take back and see if they have the gift receipt for in the box. Really? That's what you're going to do. Trust me on that. And if you want to advertise with us, don't be afraid. Email us, guttingthesacredcow at gmail.com. Hit us up. Or if you want to drop some feedback, say hi. What the hell? We'll respond. We like you guys. You're pretty cool. No one's creepy yet. But So uh, let's keep it like that. Without any further ado, here's James doing Dark Knight Rises. Gather round, here's what I know. Jordy, you show me a check for forty thousand dollars, I'll quit my fucking job right now. Kevin Israel, name that film. It's one we did uh, a while back, Wolf of Wall Street. Very good, sir. Very good. I was recently accused by my friend Nick Carnival, super fan of the show, of me giving you softball questions at times, and uh, but he thinks most of the time it's a pretty fair down the middle pick. But uh, I didn't know if you're gonna get that one, so kudos to you. Got I don't know. I think sometimes you pick some pretty. Uh... Some pretty out of the left field ones, so I'll take it. Uh, I'll right. take a W. Excellent, my friend. Cutting the sacred cow. Here we are again, again, folks. How are you, Kevin Goatee, Kevin Israel, and we are hanging out today. And we are happy to tell you, of course, that don't forget the live show tickets for Gutting the Sacred Cow are on sale now. We have sold just about half the tickets out, so get off your asses. Get them now. These tickets are going fast. It is January 23rd of 2021, where Bill and Joanne from The Morning Show on Compound Media will be doing live and in person The Karate Kid. And I might tell you, Kevin Israel, a lot of people not happy that The Karate Kid is facing heavy fire by uh, our esteemed guests. Well, I got to tell you, I'm not happy. Or am I? You'll find out live on January 23rd. <laughs> Excellent points. That is very true. Yeah, so get your tickets now, guttingthesacredcow.com and whatnot. But today we have our guest today from across the pond, as everybody loves to say. We've got James from the First Bat podcast, who's going to come on and tell you all about why he thinks Batman, The Dark Knight Rises, is a piece of shit. James, welcome to the program. Hi guys, thanks very much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I've uh, been listening to the show for quite a while now. Um, I hope that the Karate Kid that the people want to try and get is not the 1984 classic. I hope it's the uh, horrendous 2000 and God knows when Jaden Smith version, which is what, the Kung Fu Kid, not the Karate Kid, if I'm correct? I don't think no, I actually don't think that version would qualify for it. It would show. not qualify because no one would give a shit about that. It is the 1984 <laughs> version. So. Oh no! I mean, whoever came up with that idea is is just insane. You can totally please insane. send send your hate mail to Joanne Nosichinsky <laughs> at the Morning Show on Compound Media, uh, and then you could you could direct all your hate mail toward her. That was her choice, so good on her. But. I we're love not how talking. people think we pick these movies. Every, like, you the know, format is pretty simple. Right. When people are like, 
you, people are either like, why did you choose that movie? Or you should choose this movie. That's not how it works. I have to explain that on Twitter. Like, you guys should do that movie. Go, you don't understand the very simple principle in which we operate. <laughs> the guest pick the film. This is not a we're, monarchy. This is the messengers, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Do we agree or don't we agree? That's where you're, right. you're going to find out. Christ almighty. Yeah, you can catch me on Twitter at the first bat. Um, I also do um, a hashtag game every Saturday with the sci-fi taggers at sci-fi taggers, um, where we usually have a little topic which you can uh, then pick back on and share your thoughts. Um, all sorts of little hashtag games based around science fiction, um, movies and the like, just for a bit of fun on Twitter. And that's usually uh, 8 p.m. GMT, uh, Brexit time in the UK. That's 3 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time in the u.s james has selected the dark knight rises a budget 2012 by the way 250 million dollars 1.08 billion worldwide a 2020 translation dollars 284.6 million dollar budget 1.229 billion dollars number 30 on the all I'm list. God Bottom damn. line. We just did Avengers Endgame, which was number one. Now we're doing number 30. Go figure. It's amazing that that much money is just number 30. Can I also share a fun fact with you that's not part of the five fun facts? In doing my research for this, do you know Captain Marvel is in the top 20 of all time films? As that's bad hard. as that piece of shit was? You know what? That's only because that's the that was the Endgame bounce. Easily. People knew that they needed to see that movie to see Endgame. And literally that movie was all for the, the post credit scene. I'll argue for Captain Marvel. I'll argue for it. I love that film. It's great. You like ah. Captain Marvel? Yeah, of course I do. You should have I'm him an MC, I'm a, to argue on I'm behalf. I'm an MCU boy. Oh, you son I'm of a bitch. You should have chose that film. <laughs> it was awful. Absolutely. No, no. Because I tell you, The Dark Knight Rises drives me insane with its stupidity. Okay. Sheer stupidity. Hold on, hold on. Don't get all it. fired up yet. But it. Captain Marvel, you're honest to God. No hyperbole, no horse shit. The no. only person I know to like that. She's so unlikable. The film drags. It sucks. You don't care. And the villain is just, yeah. And Nick no. Fury lost his eye to a cat? Yeah, cat aids. Well, well. cat, cat aids. Good, good feline aids. Great job, Marvel. That one really <laughs> missed the boat. Dark Knight Rises, let's do the scores. INDB, as we all know, is a 1 through 10 score with decimal points. James, what did the Dark Knight Rises get on IMDb? Please venture a guess. Um, 8.3. Kevin Israel. 8.7. James is a proud owner of two showcases. Uh, 8.4%. Uh, wow. It doesn't wow. get much That's closer. Way too high. Rotten Tomatoes, as we all know, is a 1 through 100 score, percentage points. Kevin Israel, critics, Rotten Tomatoes score. Dark Knight Rises, break it down, son. 78. James, Rotten Tomatoes critics score from you. I will say 72. 84. You both really undercut that one, I thought. Yeah. Audience, Rotten Tomatoes score, James. Oh. I'm going to say about 95. Kevin? Uh, no, I don't think it's that high. I'm going to go 88. 90. Wow. I remember. We are walking it. Quotes. So that's what that feels like when Selena Kyle leaves him on the rooftop. I chuckled. Kevin Israel, uh, quotes. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, any quotes that stood out to you? Um, cat got your tongue? Oh, puns. And, uh, and I, I'm going to get into that in my thoughts because I don't want to ruin anything. Your punishment will be more severe. I can't tell if that's a retarded Sean Connery or not. Don't take my comments. <laughs> Was it really? That's great. Yes. <laughs> don't get, I'm so good at this, sniffing out your fucking, your ploys. James, any quotes that stood out to you? Oh, I, I tell you, I've not watched it since it came out of the cinema. I've not watched it since then. I can't abide it. It's that I really don't like it that much. 
Mm-hmm. I own it because I bought the Dark Knight trilogy in a box set, but I don't, I've never watched it. It's still in the cellophane. That's mm-hmm. how much I dislike this film. So mm-hmm. in terms of quotes, I can't remember anything because all I can really think of most of the time is the Pete Holmes sketches where he's talking <laughs> about boning her, boning Talia Ghul. That's all I can think about. I really, I, I, oh, it's, oh, yeah. All I've right. Lost it already. Five fun facts. This one really hit me between the nuts. Had Heath Ledger not died, the film would have involved the Joker going on trial, while Two-Face, who would have been revealed as surviving the Dark Knight's ending, went on a rampage against across Gotham. Excuse me. I, I don't know if I like that at all. No, I would have loved to see that movie. Really? 100%. Uh, yeah. It on a trial, way more uh, I don't want to see the Joker in the fucking courtroom for a little bit, not the uh, entire but I, time. I see him being all, uh, for, I don't even want to get into it. I loved Heath Ledger so much. I would have watched him as the Joker fucking eat soup. <laughs> yeah. Look, with the Two-Face surviving and then going across doing shit, nah. That, that's the part I'm not having. The whole, if it's a whole thing on trial, nah, never mind. All right. Number two. Not surprising to anyone, Bane's voice was originally more distorted. His lines had to be re-recorded for the final cut because it was nigh impossible to understand what he was saying. I cut and pasted that nigh impossible. Who says? If I remember right, the original trailer came out with the actual voice, and and the, and everybody was like, "We don't understand what he's saying." And they, I think they, I think they went back and redubbed it after the original trailer. I see. But doesn't he? Does this? Isn't it? I don't know. It's gonna be this, Mister Next stop, fiftieth station of uh, BNC local lines, and the next stop after that will be Columbus Circle, 59th Street. Don't forget those Lombada lap dances, gentlemen. Yeah. Hey, everybody, what's going on? Jade Stage Four. Jade Stage Four. Number three, according to Tom Hardy, he based his voice for Bane on Bartley Gorman, an Irish traveler who is the undefeated bare-knuckle boxing champion of the UK. You might know that one, James. The choice of the accent is a man called Bartley Gorman, who is a bare-knuckle fighter, a Roma- or Romani, 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 whatever, gypsy. Funny. Romani, uh, Romani, 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 thank you. Uh, I didn't know that he decided to go and steal Brad Pitt's page right out of fucking the film Snatch. But it, it, why didn't he do that? At least it would have been sounded better. Yeah. Hey, mate, mate, mate. I'm going to take you back, mate. I'm going to break you back. Bye-bye, Bruce. I love Snatch. And the film was good, too. hey <laughs> <laughs> oh. David Go David Goyer revealed after the 2008's film premiere, he was approached by the executive who wanted the studio to bring, take a guess, the Riddler to life on the big screen. Who do they want to play the Riddler? One guess, I'll give you a clue. A-list, huge, huge. Tom Hanks. I mean, that's funny. DiCaprio. DiCaprio is the correct answer. Oh, wow. I feel like, you know what, I feel, I'm, I'm gonna just start answering DiCaprio all the time because I feel like he's <laughs> always the person they wanted to play something. Well, especially in the Nolan films because Nolan and Tarantino are very loyal to their, all their yeah. actors. If you're in, Michael Caine, perfect case in point. Oh, yeah. Christian Bale, Cillian Murphy, all these guys are always in. Uh, Mary Cotillard was in Inception as well as this. Yep. He keeps yep. the same fucking cast and crew for a lot of these, these films. Number five, Christian Bale famously stated he would refuse to return for part three had the character of Robin been included anywhere in the trilogy. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Good. Keep him out. And yet. <laughs> I know. Kind of, sort of, maybe. Enough about all that sort of shit. James is like Lenny Dykstra after doing uppers in the batter's box, snorting cocaine and doing greenies. He is ready to roll. I don't want to keep this line caged anymore. So it is now time for James to gut, gut the, the sacred, sacred. Cow. Cow. Okay, okay. Dark Knight Rises. First and foremost, I mean, there's so many frustrating things. Bane. I mean, I've read Batman for a long time. I mean, as a as a kid, and you remember seeing the iconic Nightfall 
you know, storyline, you see him, Bruce Wayne's back broken. The whole point of that entire story was that he had been exhausted. He'd been working constantly to try and retain and get everybody back into Arkham Asylum, all the supervillains that had escaped. He was completely defeated. This time, Bane is, I don't know, the size of a fucking Oompa Loompa. With the best one in the world, I love Tom Hardy, great actor, but he's fucking tiny. How the hell is he supposed to intimidate Bruce Wayne? How the hell is he supposed to intimidate six foot two Christian Bale with five foot seven Tom Hardy? Five foot nine, actually. Five foot nine with lips. Five foot nine. I looked it up. Has he got lips on? Has he got lips? Yes, he did. He did have lips. (laughs) (laughs) It just was. No, absolutely not. And then, if you're going to do Bane, do him properly. At least give him the re- give him the, the venom that gives him in his enhanced strength. Yes, mm-hmm. I know he's supposed to be super intelligent, and yes, I'll give him I'll give the film its due that at least Bane's not stupid. He's not Bane from Batman and Robin, which was just an abomination as well. Though physically, at least with a wrestler, you got the you got the look right. But I mean, the mask you can't understand what he's saying. It sounds like this all the time. <laughs> I also don't understand at all. I mean, I'm going to skip all over the place my argument because this film just drives me crazy. But first and foremost, you've got the world's greatest detectives but can't tell us who Miranda is. No idea. I mean, you know, you, you think about it, he's bringing someone into his board, into his boardroom, onto his company that is supposed to be a charity. Yet for some reason, it's a charity that happens to be on the New York Stock Exchange. Wait, what? It's supposed to be a charitable foundation. It's not going to be trading. How the hell could Bain steal and bankrupt Bruce Wayne? It's just not possible. And even if he did, surely all the trading would have stopped anyway. The whole thing has been set up. It's supposed to be a robbery. And yet all of a sudden, miraculously, Bruce Wayne now doesn't have any money. He's bankrupt to Wayne Enterprises. What? It's it, it said in Batman Begins that it's a charitable foundation. So that logic literally just doesn't make any sense. Plus the fact that the board vetting process would have been so rigorous to get onto the foundation, to get into the company in the first place. And he's supposed to be the world's greatest detective. Yes, he hasn't found out that this is Ra's al Ghul's daughter. What? Really? No, I'm not having that. Not at all. Doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, then you talk about the physical deterioration of Bruce Wayne. So it's supposed to be eight years set after the Dark Knight. Okay. He's gone from being somebody who was running around like there's no tomorrow to someone who can basically walk with a cane. He can't even walk properly. His reactions have gone, everything's gone. And yet obviously he puts a magic knee strap on his leg and then he can run around like Batman again. Mm. What the hell? Where the hell's that strap? I tell you what, I've been running today, lads, and I could have been doing with that today because my knee's killing me. But I've just thought, where the hell's that magic knee strap come from? Um, he hasn't patrolled for years, so his fitness. Why would he even think about taking on this new guy? He's heard about this threat about Bane. He knows that this guy is dangerous. He's supposed to be the world's greatest detective, and yet he's so overconfident, despite not being active for over eight years, that he can take him down just like that absolutely insane doesn't make any sense um if you think about the city under siege i'm sorry but there's no way in the world any government would let that city stand i don't know how many, how he's got the forces in place to cover the site the city the size of, of gotham which is supposed to be i can't remember if it's supposed to be uh, New York or New Jersey. I think it's, it's New York. York. Yeah. Jersey, Jersey, Kevin and I can take over. Don't worry. That's an easy one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it Manhattan right there. It, it, a lot of exterior of Manhattan. In fact, I had a buddy who was an extra in that fight scene on Wall Street where they converged, the cops and the, uh, and the, uh, and the mean, gang. I mean, the spectacle is great. It always is because it's Nolan. He knows how to shoot things. He knows how to make things look really good. But I, you could tell that his heart's not in his production at all. He's done it for either congrats, for um, contractual reasons or simply because of the fact that he's thinking, I'll tell you what, Warner Brothers, you let me, I'll make this because you want me to and you want another Batman movie because you know it's going to make you a lot of money, but then I can get to make whatever films I want for you in the future. Yeah, okay, Christopher, you've made us lots and lots of money for this. 
Will you be a producer for the DCEU? Yeah, okay, I'll do that. I'll, I'll agree to be, you know, in background support for the DCEU. But I just want to go and make some weird shit that's going to fry people's brains next, like Interstellar, and then, you know, move on to Tenant and all that type of stuff. Is that okay? Yeah, you can do whatever movies you want, but we just want more about it. Okay. Right, we better knock something together, guys, because we've got to do this quick because I just want to make whatever money I want. They're going to let me do whatever films I like. So I'm just going to be a completely bonkers script. Um, so which, he wrote, which, which, which he and his brother wrote, by the way. Yeah. But and usually when it works with his brother, it, it works out well. Yes, very true. Yeah, I mean, it's just really frustrating. Um, I mean, the, the next thing, you know, you talk about the city industry, I can't see how that, how that would stand up. I mean, with the best will in the world, the American forces would not let us stand up. You're not telling me that a president would not see that city under siege and go, well, we're ending there. This is just going to stop. I mean, the U.S. military is the biggest muscle on the entire planet. It literally is. I mean, if you want to talk about swinging dicks, this is it. This is the biggest machine in the world. You've got fucking tanks sat in the desert not doing anything. You're telling me you guys aren't just going to send fucking tanks in and just take it back. They blew, all the, bridge, they, they, they blew all the bridges. They could not send tanks in. The only yeah, they I could. want a little more time spent from a guy from uh, England telling us how big our dick is. Keep going. <laughs> you could have said the Air, the Air Force or the Navy, being that they isolated themselves. It's an island already, but all the bridges were blown up. But yeah, no tanks. It's just, it, it, you know, you, you've got so much, you've got so, so much military support there. There's no way in the world. I mean, there's no way you could injure anybody. I mean, you'd just be able to gas everybody that's on the streets because you know that's not going to be the general populace because they're all trapped indoors. They're not allowed to go anywhere. But we don't negotiate with terrorists. Exactly, exactly. And if this is the, if this is the DC world, I would have thought that Superman would be around. Oh uh, no, no Superman! Be. Thank God, no you know, Superman. You know, I was getting Wonder Woman instead. Um, uh, the police tactics. I oh, know the terrorists are in the are in the tunnels, so we're going to send every police officer into the tunnels. Wait, what? You've got a city of like. 15 million, tiny million, I don't know, I think it is, 10 million 10. people, yep. 10 million, and then you're going to send in 30, 40,000 police officers into the sewer all at the same time? Really? That's your tactic? Just, it just uh, it beggars belief how stupid that is. I also don't understand how the bat wing, bat helicopter, whatever it is, works, because it's from a sheer physics perspective. How the hell does that thing actually fly? Just get it. Well, get it. I won't abide by that criticism because I had a GI Joe airplane that looked exactly like that, and I knew yep. it could fly. <laughs> it had the repulsor jets at the bottom, and it flipped <laughs> up like that, and then it that's, shoots out. And that's all you need to know. It's that's it, it, man. It has fans pointing down, goes up. Yeah, man. Lucius Fox is not Tony Stark. It's not possible for him to build that type of technology. Um. Alfred is treated like absolute shite in this film. He's just treated awfully. He's gone from being this trusted confidant, like this father figure, this person who's cared for Bruce, loved him for ages, forgiven him for all his mistakes, let him run away from everything, to all of a sudden being, oh, I fucking hate you because you won't let me be Batman again. What? Really? Just get out. He's softened in his very old age now. Oh, just, it's, just, it's just insane. Um, I, I, the pit. I mean, the 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 pit and the and the back breaking scene. It just it just it's just something. Okay, so I did a little bit of medical research. I know it's supposed to be a film, a bit of fantasy. You take a step back and you, you can allow for time. But so, for example, I looked it up and it says basically from just from a basic, he has a he has a guy in his his prison cell in the pit who repairs his broken spine with a knee. It just bends him back with a bit of chiropractic. What? <laughs> it's a serious back injury. It takes eight to 12 weeks in a special brace for a back injury to heal. That excludes the six to eight weeks of physio that you've got to do after that. So it's taking nearly six months. And you're telling me still in six months, the city is still under siege? No. It's just not possible. What was, I think the whole timeline was three months. At some point, they go, this has been going on for three months. So 
he his back healed and he was running around in three months and and was jacked again uh, yeah exactly it just you just can't you can't do that it's just not possible i mean he's got to train on top of the actual rehab to restore all his strength and let's not forget just a few weeks earlier before he had his back broken he could hardly walk anyway and he hasn't got his magic knee strap in the in the pit to help him climb back up again <laughs> But wasn't that also he, wasn't that also the pit? Did they call that the pit of Lazarus, where Raoul Al Ghul was in and gained all his powers from? Are they calling that the same pit or no? I, I don't know, but the Lazarus pit. You're quite right. It's the Lazarus pit. Raoul Al Ghul has places all over the all over the world where he can go and he can regenerate, and, yeah. and that's why he's remained alive for so long. Uh, that's why I was just like trying to say, you know, I'll I'll, I'll I'll play devil's advocate in the slightest. If that was said pit, then that's maybe, but it wasn't explained for shit only because I know the backstories of this. Maybe that's how his back healed in a more above than average fashion. It's a stretch. I get it. Yeah, it, it, it certainly is. Because how the hell was, why didn't, why did Bane's face hit, face heal after it basically ripped yeah. a bit? Yeah. I didn't know that you can fix a spine by jerking someone up in a rope. And he, and he punched Ooh. him in the back, by the way. He just punched him in the back. He didn't even really aim. Yeah. You're right now. Yeah, no oh, Hajduken, no Shuruken, just a punch in the back. Now he's ready. He's ready to rumble. Yeah. You know, this guy's ready. You know, forget the Karate Kid. This is, this is Batman. He's ready to go. He can throw down now. He's had, his, he's had a knee in the back and he's all right. Oh, I mean, I've talked about the bankruptcy before, but surely anything of that fraudulent nature. So... If we accept the fact that that did happen, and he's now managed to attempt to climb out the pit, fall and fail, injuring himself again, but then he's going to try again. He then climbs up and gets out of the pit. How the hell does he get home? Where is he, and how the hell does he get home? Didn't you see, did you America. not see Transformers where Tyrese Gibson borrowed a local person's cell phone? and called in an airstrike. If he can do that, Bruce Wayne can get himself a charter jet out of fill-in-the-blank Middle East country they were in. <laughs> but he's got no money left. Who's he going to call? Yeah. Everybody thinks he's dead. Yeah. Yeah. This is Bruce Wayne, is it? No, it's not. He's dead. <laughs> down goes the phone. <laughs> Listen, I'm making a collect call to Alfred Pennyworth. Is you don't know who this is? Maybe you know who, maybe you know who this is. Yeah. Oh, Batman. Oh, all right. Yeah. Hi, I'm calling Blade Helicopter Service. Can you send a chopper out here? No, no, no. Not one from the Hamptons. I'm actually in Islamabad or wherever the fuck he was. Which they never established either. No, they no, did not. No, where are you? I, I don't know. Has the phone got GPS in it? No, uh, it's a bit of a basic. This it's a flip phone. phone. You. It is. Oh, it's got snake on it because it's a Nokia it's snake. 5110. This is a phone used by people who are cheating on their spouses or people who are terrorists who are trying to coordinate a strike. That's a I don't know where I am. Or, or Hasidic Jews, one of those three. <laughs> I don't know where I am because in the pages of exposition, they never took the time to say where this place is. Right. So it gets back. Let's not forget, of course, once he gets back to Gotham, he's got time to paint a giant bat signal and set it on fire to let Bane know he's back again. I mean, why the hell does he have time to do that? How does he do that? I mean, surely it'd take him so long to actually set up, right, I've got the Batman design, I'm going ready. Here I am, I'm going to paint it on this big building, or I'm going to stand really menacingly on top of a bridge, and then, whee, it's all on fire, and it's amazing. It's the most exciting thing I've ever said. Are oh, you afraid, Bane Batman? It's home. And now, Could you make that sound effect again for me? <laughs> not just am I home not just am I home I'm home but I'm also now have fear because I've learned that you need fear in order to be on the edge in order to keep fighting in order to get what you want right. and you're not afraid are you babe so now that you are we can, let's have a big scrap I also don't understand how on earth he knew where to get all the Batman toys now okay so let's accept the fact that Miranda's Ty Al Ghul, she's worked into Wayne Enterprises, blah, blah, blah. but all of that stuff's supposed to be kept off the books. Now, okay, so you'll go back and say, right, well, let's have a look at The Dark Knight, and that lawyer find out all about that stuff and said he suspects it. But it's, it's drilled, and, and, 
but the, what about the back cave at Wayne Manor? And I just, it hurts my brain. And that's it. We haven't even spoken about Robin at all. And the fact that the world's most incompetent police officer just looked across at Bruce Wayne and went, oh, is that how long you've been Batman then, mate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could tell it's the chin line, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No one else guessed it? No, I didn't think so. Yeah. And now I'm going to become Batman when you retire. How amazing is that? Yeah. No training other than my basic police stuff. Woohoo! What? Just, just know how to kill your trilogy. You're just killing it. Just, just, just stop. And then it ends, and I just think, oh, the fight scene, and then. Catwoman and I mean, I, I, Catwoman was great. I, I don't. I think that Anna Hathaway was actually really good in the role. I thought she was a little bit underserved at times, but I thought she was actually quite entertaining. I thought she was brought something a bit different and a nice comparator to you know Michelle Pfeiffer, who obviously was the benchmark and from a movie perspective anyway. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, just I'm sorry. It's it's just. Is the plot holes in this film just drive me insane. And I'm a, I am will admit I'm a Nolan fanboy. I love Inception. I love Batman Begins. I love The Dark Knight. I love all the early stuff. Memento, going all the way through. Heck, I'll even stand up and say that I like the one with, you know, like Insomnia with Robin Williams and um, Al Pacino in it. I, you know, I know it's not as good as the original, but I'll, I'll watch it. It's a good film. But God, The Dark Knight Rises. I just think you want to go now. <laughs> Are those all your argument points? Yes, I've, 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 I think it's unfair for me to continue ranting at you guys because you're Fair thinking, enough. oh my God. Kudos to you for coming up with all that and not having rewatched it. By the way. I was just going to fuck you. I was just going to say that. I'm like, oh man, he didn't watch the film again. Son of a bitch. I was man. ready to send you a text message and I didn't. I know. I know. <laughs> he, came out, he came out guns blazing and didn't run out of ammo. Uh, give me a number, James, one to 10 that you would give The Dark Knight Rises. Four. I'll prove to you. I will prove to you on my IMDb rating because I've got it on the IMDb. I believe you. There's, right. you know, I think you're going to lie to me about more important and fun things in your IMDb scores for a film. Yeah, no, I four. respect the four. It's, it's four. I mean, four. I'll give it the reason why it gets a four. Anne Hathaway, she's great. It's 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 still shot very well. Uh, uh, but then I kind of run out of momentum. You were See, saying when veterans come on and they say they hate the movie, and then they're like, "I give it a one." I'm like, "Ah." Eh, I gave the point dynamite but, a zero, and I fucking right, hate that. That's a piece of shit movie, and we Thank all you. agree. Okay. <laughs> Unless some of our friends we know. <laughs> uh, Kevin, let me go first on this one. Knock yourself out. I've seen this film several times. In fact, I'm going to start off with the story. I've seen this. I saw this film. The Midnight Showing. And if you recall, Kevin, you might have been there as well. They did a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back airing of all Batman films yeah. and le ending with the Midnight Showing of The Dark Knight Rises. And I said, I can't think of a better way to spend $25 and sit through all three Nolan films in one night. And my now wife says, I'll go with you. Now, right at this time, I had purchased an engagement ring. And the one caveat my wife gave me was that I don't want to know. I just, all I care about is I want to be surprised. <laughs> and let me tell you boys something. I was a pubic hair away from bringing that ring into the theater oh. in between Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises to go, surprise, but I didn't. Thank I God. saved it to the next day where I proposed to her in the parking lot of Great Adventure. That's where she was surprised. <laughs> Even more romantic. <laughs> <laughs> in the shadow of the Green Lantern ride, I might add. More romantic, a Cineplex or Great Adventure? She wanted, listen, Jersey. she wanted to be surprised. The surprise factor was a 12. The romance factor was a negative two. So that's a 10 <laughs> in my book. <laughs> I saw this film opening night, and here we go. I have seen this film several times. I still have no idea why they needed to cut the plane in half in the very beginning opening sequence. What was the whole point of that? It was cool, but why? Bane's dialogue was harder to understand than a Pakistani cab driver. <laughs> and, 
Anne Hathaway has always and will always be in my top 10. Also on the insanely under the radar hot, go watch two films, Havoc and Love and Other Drugs. She shows the goods. She is so fucking hot to me. The, 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 the mureness, she's classy, and I think she's an absolute smoke show. Could not agree Just more. Just interrupt. Go ahead. One very quickly. I would recommend, if you've not seen it, watch Colossal. Fucking brilliant. Starts, in one, starts off in one direction, goes completely very dark place, but she's great in that film. I never I saw Colossal. Really I haven't really either. Film. Gary Oldman is viciously underrated as an actor. Go watch Darkest Hour, where he plays Winston Churchill. Gambling oh. fun fact, I bet on him to win Best Actor the minute after I saw that in the theater. You know what the odds were to win that Best Actor? Minus 1,800. I threw down 800 bucks and won $17. <laughs> Easy <laughs> money. You know what, though? See that and then go watch Fifth Element and realize that's the same guy. Yeah. But then also go watch Dracula. He was great. Gary O in, in uh, um, True Romance. I mean, so under the radar, amazing. The last. Have you seen the film? What's the film? There's the one where he um, he is related to um, uh, from Game of Thrones. Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. Yeah, oh, Peter the one, Dinklage. the midget film. Yes. I was it like Twinkle Toes or something? I yeah, I too. Is it oh. McConaughey in that too? I think I read. Yes. Yeah, I, I never did, saw I it. They talked yeah. that film. Yeah, it must I'll, be gold. I bet. The social justice warriors are snick, 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 sharpening their knives if that were to ever resurface. The last Bruce Wayne to get punked this badly was Adam West in the 1960s Batman film by Miss Kitka when forced to being flying on an umbrella. <laughs> Selena Kyle tells Batman when there's no killing, where's the fun in that? She's never killed anyone in any iteration of I've ever heard, read, or seen. That was a little, eh, no. The corporate espionage with Daggett was interesting and original for a Batman film, but it did not hook me. Bane sounds like if Yoda was Irish. <laughs> when Bane did break Batman's back, I yelled out, God damn, in the middle of the theater. I, I thought that would be cool if they did it, and they did it, and I loved it. Joseph Gordon-Levitt feels shoehorned for this entire film. For the Batman swan, swan song, I don't want to see the guy from Third Rock from the Sun. Thank you very much. Let's have a little imagination. Imagine if Bane did dirty talk. I was born in the darkness. My but my penis is going into the darkness between your cheeks. I'm Gotham's reckoning, and I reckon it's time for a blowjob. I've already broken Batman's back, and now I'm going to blow out your back. <laughs> yeah. How There's many a parody I didn't see coming? Yeah, well, listen, I have to make this shit fun. How many women do you think Bruce Wayne had lined up from the seekingarrangement.com, the website for sugar babies? I, I don't even know what that is. I just found out about that on a podcast four days ago. So I said, hmm, that's interesting. I bet he dressed them up as super, various supervillains and had vicious hate sex with them all. Why so serious? Well, riddle me this. Why not put an umbrella in your pussy? That's four in one. Okay. Unlike our guest, I love the Raz Al Ghul twist, where it is his daughter. Fucking brilliant. I, I see what you're saying about the world's greatest detective, and I agree. But I love that twist. Like, oh, shit, they managed to bring him back. Dug it. If I'm climbing up that the, the Lazarus pit, the last thing I want is that chanting, the hada, hada, he, he, ha. Give me an old-fashioned da 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 charge. And by the way, I like the power, then. they were saying just meant rise. Yeah, I know. I saw that. That was in the... Uh, and he said it, too, in the film. They, they, yeah. they, they, the first act is slow. The second act does kick up a notch or two. I love seeing Dr. Crane as the judge. Why don't we have more of him in this film? He was great in the first one. The second one, I get why he was kind of a shoot away. Fine. But why not make him have a little more than two scenes in the courtroom in this? I fucking love him. Totally agree. 
Hans Zimmer brings his A game yet again with the score. The man does not fucking miss. Nolan, and, and, and our guest just alluded to this earlier, he ignores the Bane super serum backstory. Very odd that Nolan ignore, ignores source material. Thought that was strange. Um, Tom Hardy, a very curious choice to play Bane, being he's 5'9", and had to borrow Tom Cruise's lifts to play Bane. I, why was, where was Dave Batista when you well, to give him a shot? What about Goldberg? What about Bruce Falanche? Any of these guys could have played Bane. When Batman flies the bomb away, I swear to God, I got a little teary eye. I go, please don't die. Please don't die. Please don't die. I hated the Robin angle in the end with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I hope to Christ they don't sully the, tr the trilogy's memory with this nonsense where he gets his own film or films. This film did have the most slow points out of the three and more than a couple of moments where it dragged. The first two films had zero or next to zero few moments where you looked at your watch. This is the worst, in quotes, of the trilogy. That being said, I enjoy this film. It's better than fine, but it's not great. Does it pass the remote test? The remote test, James, is where if you're flipping around in cable and at any point a film comes on, no matter if there's half an hour, hour, two hours left, you are hooked until the very end. This film does not pass my remote test. There are certain scenes I would watch and go, all right, I'm cool. I enjoyed the continuation of the League of Shadows thread and the emergence of Talia al Ghul. Anne Hathaway, amazing Catwoman. Uh, Tom Hardy, a mediocre Bane. The goddamn filter they use in his mouth, I knocked off half a point for just that already. A, a decent send-off save the Joseph Gordon-Levitt alluding to being Robin and how, my God, subtlety like a square kick in the nuts. Why don't you go by your other name, Robin? I wanted to yell out as much as I was enjoying it the first time I saw it. Boo! In the theater when they fucking said that. I look at my wife and go, no! I give this film a 6 out of 10. In fact, our guest, you've done yet again something that many people have not done. You've got me to change my score. I had originally a 6.5. I have now docked it down to a 6 out of 10. So pat yourself in the back. I like it. It is the worst by far. By far. It's still good. Not great. Kevin Israel, the floor is yours. I took an unnecessary amount of notes for this movie as I was watching it. I didn't, and, and I, both of you covered a lot of my points, so I'm going to try not to retread um, already broken ground. But the, uh, there, the plot, like, like James said, the plot holes in this are just so glaring, and the movie is so overly complicated. I was 30 minutes into this, the rewatch. And this was, by the way, like, like Kev, I didn't see it the 12 o'clock show. I saw it the next day. I was very excited about this. I loved the first two. I love, love um, the second one. Uh, let, me, let me interrupt you for one second. Remember when the trailers came out? I had shivers going up my fucking butthole when he was blowing this. You see him blowing up the stadium while oh. the kid sings the national anthem. Yep. I'm so like, I, holy I shit. I could still feel it. Yeah, me too. I was like, holy shit. This is going to be hopefully as good, but it's going to be fucking bonkers, man. Yep. I can't wait. Bonkers was the exact word I was going to say. Thank you. Bonkers. Right. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the movie is just so bogged down with plot just so much nolan over nolan's this and then nolan's it some more and i so i saw it in the theater i've never watched the whole movie all the way through again uh this was my first time re-watching the entire movie i watched pieces of it it's a long movie it doesn't have a lot of great scenes in it that i go oh, i want to watch that scene uh i wanted to watch every scene that heath ledger was in i would watch that every morning that i woke up I, he was fantastic. There was no characters that were, even came close to, to fucking licking Heath Ledger's boots in this yes. movie. And they wanted so badly for Tom Hardy to be that guy. They wanted him, they, and they went out, and that's why they did it. They went out and found an actor of that level, and they said, oh, you're going to be able to, and he didn't. He was not Bane, and 
and Nolan completely was just like, I know there's a whole story about this character, but fuck it, we're doing something else. And it was a mess. This movie, half, not even halfway through this movie, I was asking so many questions. Why did he have to cut the plane in half? <laughs> why did she steal the jewels? Why did, he, why did she kidnap the congressman? What's Bane doing beneath the city? Where is this prison? What happened to the stock exchange? Why, why does Selena know where Bane is? Why does when Bruce just goes, I need to know where Bane is. He, she's like, oh, I know where he is. Yeah. There's so many, and I'm, sure, and I'm sure these were all answered. And I know a lot of them were answered. But the fact was, I needed to ask them. There were so many stupid little plot points that just were overly complicated and just bogged down this movie incredibly. Um, there was one scene that I thought was really important, one line. At the, at the, uh, at the ball where he's dancing with Selena and she, she said, who are you? And he goes, I'm pretending to be Bruce Wayne. That's the most Batman thing that happened in this movie. Because in my opinion, and I've, I've said this a number of times on this podcast and I've said it dozens of times just throughout my life, Batman is who Bruce Wayne actually is. Bruce Wayne is the man. He's pretending to be Bruce Wayne. He is Batman. And that's why I think uh, I, I've, I've never been a fan of Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne or as Batman. And like, and James, you literally, I have at the top of my notes, Pete Holmes. All, every time Batman speaks now, I just see the Pete Holmes sketches. And it gets worse each movie. And apparently Chris Nolan told him to keep ramping up that, that voice and overdoing it. And he wanted more of that grab. And it's just, it gets worse and worse and worse. And something about the way his faces and the mask just looks ridiculous. And Pete Holmes grabbed that and made it. He, Pete Holmes became Batman. It's, it's, it's just crazy. If you watch those sketch, sketches, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The bionic leg thing. Drove me nuts the minute I saw it in the movie. First of all, he has one bionic leg. Wouldn't he walk unevenly? And by the way, even if you put a, like the, that thing on your leg and then you kick a brick wall, you'd still break your foot. Like you're not breaking through brick. You're not, it does not give you any more bone. It's not a whole suit of armor to like Iron Man. And then they never acknowledge him having that bionic leg again. They could have done stuff throughout the movie, kind of like in the in this in the in the in the second movie where he has that thing in his hand that's like a can opener, and he he opens up the van, and they reference that again later in the movie. They never never reference this bionic leg thing again, and it just seemed like it. It's a stupid little point, but it seems like Nolan just kept on throwing in these little things, and then I was like, well, "What are you going to do with that?" And he's like, "I don't know," and just kept going, and he just kept tossing in all this little shit that just again just kept bogging down the movie. Bane sounded like Sean Connery doing a Darth Vader impression. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> it's so, so disconcerting. And I actually dis disagree with James. You can understand everything he's saying because they went back and they redubbed it so you could understand it to the point where his voice doesn't actually fit into the scenes. You can tell that anytime he speaks, he wasn't saying that at that moment. His voice sounds clearer and a little bit louder than everybody else's voice in the scene. And it just comes off wrong. And also wrong, and I have to agree with you again, James, is his size. He's not, and he got jacked for this. Don't get me wrong. That scene in the oh, yeah. scene where he turns around and he's got his back and he stands up. and they, they did a good job trying to make him look big, but he's not just, he's just not physically imposing enough to be Bane. Bane was supposed to be huge and threatening and terrifying. And even with the stupid spider thing on his face, he never, he never got there for me. Like Heath Ledger did such a good job being crazy, being a unique crazy, but still being Joker. Like we, he, he, he did it perfectly. And I know it's all, he set such a high bar, but the, he wasn't Bane to me. To me, that, that's, this character wasn't Bane. He was just, but again, then again, I kind of feel the same way about Christian Bale as Batman. My favorite Batman, my favorite Bruce Wayne, that is, is Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck in uh, Batman v Superman. That movie was shit. He did a great job as Bruce Wayne. He captured Bruce Wayne's reluctance. He captured his, you know, kind of faking his charm. Uh, Christian Bale and almost all of these movies was never came off as charming as Bruce Wayne. He came off as just kind of this dick who was just going through life. Where Bruce Wayne actually has a personality. It's fake, but he has a personality. Christian Bale never had a personality in any of these movies. 
the the whole thing in the pit was just so out of left field and it's never really explained and like you you they would have no like they're just these people in this pit who's putting them there nobody cares that they're there and they're just all waiting for somebody to climb it's just a ridiculous storyline that i feel like that could have been a whole movie whatever he was trying to do there could have been an entire movie that he just decided to throw this thing in and and everything you said james as far as how did he get back was it was exactly right the movie was so complicated like like goatee said the whole financial side, the whole espion, financial espionage side of this, I don't even get the fuck what, the, what they were doing. It was ridiculously complicated. They, they actually said put option. That was a term they used in a Batman movie. And they thought the audience was going to go, ugh, he pulled a put of course. option. Nobody knows what the fuck that was. And by the way, and, and like, I, th- I think James said it, that's not, there, there's the SEC. They would have gotten involved the minute this all started. He wouldn't have lost all his money. And even if you do lose all your money, they don't take your car. He probably bought that car. He's not, Bruce Wayne isn't financing a Lamborghini. He bought it. They don't just come and take it. And if they do take it, they're not taking it the same day. You know how long it takes to repo a car? And they took his house? That house has been in his family for year, for generations. They're not, they're not a 60-year mortgage plan, guys. Right. He owns that house outright. And he wasn't taking a second mortgage on it to fucking finance the Batcave. He was a billionaire, for Christ's sake. And he had money put away. He didn't, I mean, sure, he might have lost his investments, but he had cash options. I'm sure he had offshore accounts. He's fucking Batman. He would have had $10 million just sitting in a fucking room somewhere in case this shit went down. That drove me bananas. When they had to break into this house, they're like, oh, he turned his lights off. First of all, they don't turn the electricity off the same day. You know how, what you have to do to get your electricity turned off? It's illegal to do it, especially if it's cold. It's, that, was, that was all just horseshit. I could keep going, uh, and I have so many more notes. The back surgery thing, fucking ridiculous. You guys covered it's my a favorite lot. bit now. We keep talking about it. I love it so much. It's just like, it's just so stupid. It really <laughs> is just so stupid. So, and you probably would have found a lot, like, I mean, I literally just watched this movie. And, uh, okay, and one last thing about the backbreaking thing and him coming back. I quarantined for four months during the uh, pandemic. I put on 15 pounds and became a fat mess. And it took me another eight months to come back from that. He's not coming back from a broken back, living in a third world fucking underground prison to fight as bat. That's horseshit. The whole thing's horseshit. And last but not least, I'll close with this. The Robin thing was ridiculous. And we all saw it coming. Everybody in the movie was just waiting for him to become Robin, and he never did. They couldn't have just said, oh, your real name is Grayson? That would have been so much better than his name being Robin. That was so in your face. That was like, that was almost like Christopher Nolan going, yeah, I never even read the comic books. I just know there was a guy named Robin. That was his name, right? Like, no, you idiot. It should have just been Grayson. And then all the fans who kind of get it would have gone, uh, and then the people who didn't would have gone, I, I don't get it. But the Robin thing was just awful. I have to admit, I know why I never watch this movie again, because this is not a good movie. This is not... Batman uh, Begins was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Batman Return, Batman Rises. What was the second? Dark one? Knight. Dark Knight was, was fucking fantastic. Uh, I love that movie. I will give the caveat that I think if Heath Ledger wasn't in that movie, there's a chance it would have not been as good. Um, I think Heath really carried that movie because I never bought into Christian Bale as as Batman or as Bruce Wayne. I just thought he was a guy in a suit. It was fine. Visually, it was always impressive. And I liked, I liked all the toys and they've always filmed it well. This one, I think was, I actually think was a bad movie. I think it was just, it felt like it was forced together. The plot was a mess. The characters were okay. I don't think Anne Hathaway was as great as you guys gave her credit for in this movie. How dare you? Um, she was very bland and blah. Uh, and, just, and her lines, her lines felt like they all should have been in like the Batman series like the Adam West Batman, like they were like, you know who will make like the comic book or the, co- or the original series? We'll make her. We'll give her all the cheesy, weird lines. Uh, she just, she didn't fit. The whole movie, the movie's a mess. And I got to tell you, by the time he, he flew away and the thing blew up, I, on my rewatch, I was thinking, you know what? I kind of am going to go with the theory that he's dead. So we never have to see him again. Because to me, this movie was, was a mess. Um, I hope at some point they do do Batman justice 
uh, in, on the big screen. The, I, I just never think that this trilogy got, got him where he should be. Um, so yeah, for me, this movie is a five. I think this, after rewatching it and hearing some of your points, this is the beginning of the downfall for Nolan. As we've said, Inception was in between. Actually, I take that back. Inception was. Inception started the, let's make things super complicated without the payoff. That's where that started. This followed the trend. You know, what was after? It was Dunkirk after that, I guess. I, I believe without even looking, I think it was. That wasn't as cre- good. But, and then Tenet, which was a complete pile of dog shit. Uh, I will say that right now. And yet Is that again. online yet? Yeah. I mean, I agree with you before, James. That he, early Nolan, love it. Later Nolan, mm-mm-mm. He's losing his street cred with me. Critics, five-star five star reviews. Five star reviews. <laughs> it is, it is the perfect film reviews. for what it needs to be. No. That's a five-star res- review? That's a five-star rating. I respected The Dark Knight Rises. I didn't quite love it. Here, Nolan uh, brilliantly, brilliantly closes the final chapter of one of the most amazing film trilogies of recent time. Rises gives the finish Nolan's characters deserve, but to say it reaches the height of its predecessors is predictably hard. The Dark Knight Rises delivers a satisfying and emotional conclusion to a trilogy, which will go down in history as one of the best ever. This is Christopher Nolan's crowning achievement and a perfect Batman film. Jesus. Oh, God. That a guy who's never seen anything else that was Batman. Yeah. Critics, one-star reviews. Rises is like the Batman films that have preceded it. An ideological muddle, but none has been so completely devoid of intellectual clarity weighed down by pretentious by well they put portentiousness weighed by pretentious weighed down by pretentiousness and momentum momentousness is that a word no. i don't think it is jury no, is no. Not in this no. no. <laughs> the overall story remains a bit muddled a better trilogy capper than a movie in its own right every shred of wit mystery and humanity is pummeled out leaving only a bullish mishmash of zeitgeisty anxiety. Mom, where did you put the thesaurus again? I can't find it. When people use the word zeitgeist, if somebody uses the word zeitgeist, I'm immediately like, I know uh, exactly who Someone wants to say they also like 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> Meanwhile, here's me, exit stage right. The story is dense, overlong, and studded with references that will make sense only to those intimate with no one's previous excursions into Batmanhood. Yeah, that's true, dummy. That's why it's the last of a trilogy to finally wrap up everything that was created with the first two. I fucking hate critics. I watched Return of the King, and what's with all these little people running around? It didn't make any sense. What do I have to see those other movies? Why are they going for a ring for three and a half hours? Ugh. No one's dour realism has turned the Batman experience into something like a sexless, eyes wide shut party. No, it doesn't. That's the most ridiculous statement I think I've heard about a review in a film. What the hell is Eyes Wide Shut going to do with Batman, for God's sake? He yeah. wanted to show that he's seen Eyes Wide Shut. I have too, yeah, but, but you know uh, what? I find better ways to shoehorn it, like the orgy scenes. That's the way you shoehorn it, a reference about Eyes Wide Shut in a conversation. Amazon five-star reviews. Oh, boys, get ready. I am a a certified, self-proclaimed Batman expert historian, and 2020 will mark my seventh decade as a fan. Where do I begin? Imo, the best Batman movie ever made, writing, script, story, visually unequaled in the franchise. This guy's, and this is me saying, this is why we can never have student debt forgiven. Assholes like these will try and get a Batman history as a major and then wonder why they're employable by only comic book stores or Spencer gift stores. Wait, did he say seven decades? Yes. So he's in his 70s, if not 80? Yes. 
I've never known any octogenarian or septuagenarian using the word I, using the phrase IMO. Right. I mean, he would have he would have typed it. I mean, he wouldn't be writing an Amazon review anyway. He would have mailed it in. <laughs> I'm writing a letter to the, writing a letter to the editor. I'm writing like, a strongly worded yeah, letter yeah. to this Amazon person. Yeah, can you imagine? Angel. Can you imagine all the panties that drop with that are soaking wet when he goes, "Ladies, I'm a Batman historian." Self-proclaimed. I think the best explanation for this is the guy doesn't know how long a decade is. Is it like a decade isn't three years? I thought it was three years. No? Shit. I love Batman as a kid. Batman and Robin probably having been my favorite. I was eight, okay. And a young Clooney, short-skirted Alicia Silverstone, who was fat, flipping that blonde hair around. Uma Thurman as a sexy villain. Why? What kid wouldn't be dazzled? Uma Thurman is hot. Let's also go out there. You're shaking your head no. I don't think so. I disagree. Oh, I think oh she's, she's beautiful. Thank you very much. They, they were all epic films on their own, but Dark Knight Rises brought them all together and wrapped it up perfectly. I like someone who admitted to liking Batman and Robin, even at eight. That takes some guts. That's right around where the cutoff was for liking that movie. Yeah. I don't even think an eight-year-old with common sense would like that piece of shit. This guy's probably eats nothing but chicken <laughs> fingers as an adult, right? This get oh here's it ready get ready Kevin you know where I'm gonna end with this one. This film is a Nolan's remake of A Tale of Two Cities or perhaps even Burke's short contemporaneous essays on the French Revolution if you like a Batman movie as a cautionary tale about the perfectibility of man via the social contract contract excuse me. This following the Dark Knight which was the only great movie about 9/11. And existential threats to our own Lockean liberal society. Warning, warning, whoop, whoop. Asshole with American lit degree thinks he's at a cocktail party and trying to impress people by making comparisons to Dickens' work. Fire flares, hard starboard right. Evade, evade. What a queef. <laughs> Social contract is right next to Zeitgeist. Right. Oh, and I, I, wanna... have one, I have one more thought that I want to make. Please. I, this was one, one note that I, I meant to say. No one couldn't have even made the other football team the Metropolis Warriors or something. Like, just right. to give that little nod. Right. Kind of, so people would be like, ah, he picked some random city that I'm sure was probably in the comic books. But, like, the whole time I was like, oh, it's probably going to be Metropolis. And it wasn't. And I thought that was just at least one tiny little, like, hey, we are existing in the DC universe. Fun fact number seven Two of the of people on the uh, players on the Gotham team, Heinz Ward, who ran the kickoff back, oh, yeah. and Ben Roethlisberger. Last one. Uh, no, yeah, this last one. I agree. Deep dish is awesome. Can you think of anything deep dish that's not good? Rather it be pizza, chowder, casserole, pie, whatever have you, that deep down creamy center, those burnt sides, and that crispy crust is the business. I digress, but not really. Apart from deep dish awesome, sounding like what the prisoners chant over and over again in the movie, that is funny. Deep that's dish really awesome. Funny. Awesome. That's, that's funny. Uh, this movie is a finely baked deep dish something delicious cinematically. Much like a deep dish bake, the combining of all these flavors can be a bit jarring, and some people won't eat the crust and scrape the burn off with a fork. It's still good, and no menu is complete without a deep dish option. A finale to the greatest Batman trilogy ever had to be deep dish, and people ate it up. I guarantee this person wrote this review while on a diet or juice cleanse. Nobody has ever committed to an analogy like that. God bless him. What Midwest state is he from with all the casserole and deep dish references? That's what I want to know. He's and definitely now, over three bills. What's that? He's definitely over three bills. Three. How about four? <laughs> and that's conservative. Amazon one star reviews. First one, ready? Yeah. And then his power went out and he was like, shit. <laughs> oh, it saved? Cool. Next one. Too long. What? Two hour and 45 minute movie? The villain was terrible. 
Anne Hathaway embarrassed cat women everywhere, and Alfred was a whiny little bitch. Nothing fun about this movie. Trout have more soul than this Batman. A trout is a fish for those of you apathetic morons reading this review. So breath in, instead of breathe, the bat fart Gotham. You've earned it. This movie was almost as good as Steel. However, you might say Shaq's acting was superb in comparison. This movie was only slightly better than, nope, can't think of a worse movie. Compared this to Son of Mask, kicked ass. Even John Ritter was a better hero at large. By the way, do you guano-chomping movie review readers realize that idiot humans are causing the demise of the Chiropetera? Chiro, Chiropetera? I don't know what that one is. Sorry. I think that's like the Chiropetera? Stop spelunking. You are spreading disease and killing off all the bats. Bats are crucial in the maintenance of a healthy ecosystem. I love this guy. Who wrote this? The ghost of Don Rickles? <laughs> the sound... <laughs> You're still laughing. The sound tracked, T-R-A-C-T, T-R-A-C-T, was awful. I could barely understand the character's words except when Bane was speaking which was too loud and very muffled because of the mask, I guess. The lighting was terrible through the entire film. Everything was always dark, always in the shadows. And most importantly, if you're making a movie about Batman, shouldn't the Batman appear in costume more often? The injured Bruce Wayne had a lot of face time as he hobbled through the scenes, but only appeared as Batman a few times and got his butt kicked more often than not. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of the book. He does make it. It was 46 minutes before you saw Batman. I mean, I, I, the thing about that, though, I love the oxymoron of um, a muffled sound, but too loud. Yeah. Well, that's why they're, that's why these are the Amazon one star reviews. Worst Batman movie ever. The only reason it gets one star is because Catwoman is hot. I cosign. I don't have enough time to elaborate on all the reasons. It is terrible to see for yourself. Stop it. This waterhead has plenty of more time to add to his list of reasons because he can write the review in between greeting people at Walmart. <laughs> this movie was basically the ultimate cliche. Last minute escapes, Batman teleporting across countries, and the refusal to kill Batman made this one of the worst movies I have ever seen. I would rather watch Birdemic. Signed, Snyder Cut for Life 2021. See, we almost made it through an entire episode without bringing up Snyder Cut. And there you are, and you're a dick. The, uh, there was refusal to kill Bat with Bat. Asshole, that's his whole fucking credo. Where have you been? This is what annoys me. Do just the most basic research, and you can save yourself our, to us turning the guns on you. Last one. Well, you have to say that scene where he said, "No guns, no killing," yeah. just felt so fake. Yeah, like you're trying to build this like realistic scenario for Batman to exist in. It doesn't feel like something anybody would say. Like he would have just stopped her and moved on. Like he's got to stop to give her a lesson. <sighs> yes. <laughs> But I mean, you should know that's that's the deal anyway. But no, I, I I totally agree with you. Right. Last one. I don't remember ordering this DVD. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Why did it take time to write a review then? I like his. I, I like service. I like how he has amnesia or just gets blackout drunk and then has to document said fact on Amazon. I don't remember ordering this or the real doll that also appeared. <laughs> take both. Reminds me of Naked Gun Two and a Half. I would never go in this store of filth. Frank, by the way, your sweetest <laughs> suck machine two thousand has just arrived. <laughs> Kevin Israel, did James from the first bat gut the sacred cow? I think he did. For me, I think he did. I have to say. I'm 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 willing to uh, to discuss this and to put it to a vote. I think I think he fucking did. I think he got it. I think he got it. Well, if you can get me to shave a half a point off my score, I would definitely say that he has definitely got the sacred cow. So yes, take a victory lap, James. God damn it, you earned it. And before we Thank get to much. and before we actually got to do it, you might as well go to guttingthesacredcow.com right now and wear this shirt that I have, and Kevin is wearing as well. I noticed that as well. 
Go to guttingthesacredcow.com everywhere to get yourself a shirt, hat, bag, mug. More importantly, buy tickets for our live show. Good to say, oh, every day our articles are up. Every Monday through Friday, go to guttingthesacredcow.com. You can find our uh, musings and thoughts. And Kevin's going to, every week for the news article, post a, an update about the Snyder Cut. So enjoy that. As he did I know week. you will. <laughs> but more importantly, of course, don't forget guttingthesacredcow at gmail.com if you want to advertise with us. That is we're looking for more sponsors, and we'd love to help you build your business or brand, guttingthesacredcow at gmail.com. And, of course, kevingoatee.com, K-E-V-I-N-G-O-O-T-E-E, -E, as well as kevingoatee.com. For picks, Kevin Israel, where can the world find you? Uh, kevinisrael.com, uh, comedy is coming back, or is it? I don't know. No, it's not. <laughs> New York is weird. There's a pandemic. Uh, I was once a stand-up comedian. Now uh, I'm a podcaster with Kevin Goatee. Um, <laughs> uh, and my album, The Struggle is Real, if you want to remember what stand-up comedy was like, you can get it on iTunes and everything else. Um, yeah, I'm James. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at The First Bat. Um, my podcast, which I've not done anything for a little while, is uh, The First Bat uh, Cast, and you can catch that on iTunes. Um, you can also catch it on YouTube where you can see my very well watched video um, on, on my YouTube channel where um, it's got just as many hates as it has likes when I just did a little video about top 10 starships in sci-fi, which is a personal high. Um, I love the fact that I just said that it's just my favourite ships, but you know, most people seem to hate it as much as like it because I put the Millennium Falcon in there. You know, well, who wouldn't? I like hey, it. What? Why no. That should be number one. That's my number one. I mean, let's be, let's be honest. I, I put it in there. Like These are just like ships that I really like. So it's got some really weird stuff that I really like, but it's also got the Falcon. And they've got, oh my God, it's so an original. You put a Millennium Falcon in there. Oh, your editing's really shit. Yeah, I, I did it on my fucking iPhone, you twat. <laughs> the Millennium Falcon anyway. 78 Trans Am of cars. Everybody loves it. Yeah, how can you not? It's beautiful. It's, I would call you in a question if you. I would beautiful. call. I would call you in a question if you didn't have it. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. James, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming on gutting the sacred cow. No, thanks for the invite, guys. Really enjoyed it. It's been great chatting to you both. Likewise, thanks. Kevin Goatee, Kevin Israel, we're out. We'll see you next time, folks. Take care. <laughs>